My name is Christopher Joya and I'm a fire commissioner with the Franklin Square and Munson Fire District in the town of Franklin Square, New York. As I'm sure you'll agree, the firefighting profession is one of the most trusted, respected, and noble professions, and not without good reason. Amongst many other qualities, the firefighting profession is known for its solid reliability and integrity. Trust is of the utmost importance in public safety. The public need to trust firefighters for us to do our job. They need to trust us with their personal property, their homes, their privacy, their safety, and the safety of their loved ones. Our firefighting forefathers established a very long legacy of trust and respect in our profession that we continue to uphold. This solid reputation, which the public can always rely on in any situation, is something which we take great pride in and protect. You can trust firefighters to know their job. You can trust them to have your back. 
You can trust them to be honest. Trust them to serve your best interests. And when facing great risk to themselves, you can trust them with your safety and even your life. Please take your time to examine and consider the details shared in Calling Out Bravo 7. This film was produced by active duty and retired firefighters. Given their capacity for exponential growth, high-rise fires present one of the greatest challenges to firefighters today, due to limited access from outside by ladders and the ease with which occupants and rescuers can become trapped. Fires in these structures pose a profound threat to life and property. High-rise buildings are, of course, designed with these considerations in mind. They are therefore built to contain fire, protect exit routes, and employ architectural fire protection measures to prevent structural fire damage. National Fire Service operational procedures provide clear guidance in dealing with these situations and aim to maximise the effectiveness of firefighting and rescue operations whilst minimising risk. In agreement with these specific architectural fire resistant qualities, firefighting procedures recommend the deployment of personnel into the building. Teams advance up towards the fire, deep into the building if necessary. A control point called a bridgehead is established two floors below the fire so that operations can be controlled from an advanced point. This allows the setup of entry control points so firefighters going to fight fires and carry out rescues can be recorded and crucially have their breathing apparatus checked so it's clear how much time they can spend in a dangerous smoke filled area. The amount of time each firefighter can spend fighting the fire is limited by the amount of air available, so any minute spent climbing up into a building with equipment is precious firefighting time wasted. Firefighters enter these situations confidently for good reasons. In history there have been many instances where high-rise fires have been very advanced and aggressive and, in agreement with what the building designers specify, the structures stayed true and intact. According to a 2011 US National Fire Protection Association report, there are on average 110 high-rise fires per year in the US alone. Between 2005 and 2009, there were 550 high-rise fires. Some of the most notable in history include the Yoelma Building, Sao Paulo, Brazil, 1974, sparked by an electrical fire. This residential building burned for several hours. The underlying structure was not weakened, in fact it's still in use today. The MGM Grand, which is now Bally's in Las Vegas, caught fire in 1980, killing 85 people. It's had a few facelifts and ownership changes, but the structure underneath was never compromised. It's still in use today. Los Angeles, 1988, what was then called the first interstate bank building, burned for three and a half hours. No structural failure at all. In fact, an insurance company moved in and today it's known as the Aeon Center. In 2004, the Parque Central, Caracas, Venezuela, the country's tallest building burned for 17 hours. The facade was repaired and it is still in use today. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1 Meridian Plaza, 1991, burned for 18 hours, it was refurbished. Beijing, China, the Mandarin Oriental Hotel burned for 6 hours in 2009, it stood. Chechnya's tallest building burned for seven hours in April 2013. It stood. Dubai, Moscow, Zurich and many others showed the same results. This is why firefighters continue to commit into these buildings to deal with fires, like those seen in September 2001 in New York and recently at Grenfell Towers in London. The firefighters in New York had absolutely no reason to suspect that those buildings could catastrophically fail due to fires. They knew there was a danger but absolutely not from complete and sudden building failure. Firefighters are not mindless fools. They too have families to go home to and provide for. They will take calculated risks when people's lives are at risk and there is a strong likelihood of saving lives, without a doubt. But they will not take suicidal risks.
Before looking into one particular high-rise fire, which is not commonly known about, and even less well understood, we need to digress slightly and establish an honest foundation and starting point.